Just this morning, we celebrated the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And this, of course, is where the Blessed Virgin Mary is venerated as the patroness of the Americas. It was in the 16th century when Christianity was suffering crushing divisions at the hands of the heretics who were embracing the Protestant Reformation. And as a result, our Blessed Mother appeared in person in Mexico. And it was through her most powerful and heavenly intercession that literally millions of new Catholics were received into the Holy Catholic Church. The estimates are that around 9 million new Catholics came into the church over a span of several years, immediately following the Blessed Virgin's appearance. And this set the tone for the Central and South America to become almost exclusively Catholic for several centuries to come. And Our Lady revealed herself to a pagan culture immersed in the worship of false gods and human sacrifices, very similar to our culture of death today. It's worth noting that Our Lady did not come to ask any questions. She did not come to solicit advice. She did not appear on this earth to show any tolerance or make any compromises. There was absolutely no embracing sinful situations in the name of compassion as if they did not exist. There was one simple and clear message. It was to renounce your paganism and return to the Catholic Church. The Blessed Virgin gave proof of this divine command by emblazoning her heavenly image on the tilma of St. Juan Diego, which signaled to a pagan culture that she, and only she, was queen, not any false gods or false religions. In today's Gospel, John the Baptist is sent by God to preach repentance from sin. In fact, the gospel message has always been repent and be converted. All the prophets preached this up to and including John the Baptist. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself preached repentance and conversion. And either we accept this gospel message or we die an eternal death. Advent is a season where a huge number of Catholics simply gloss over and use these precious few weeks erroneously as a time to begin celebrating Christmas. But the reality is that these few weeks are supposed to be a time when we meditate on the second coming of Christ, a time when our Lord will end human history as we know it and assume his seat on the throne of judgment. And this is what will be known as the general judgment of humanity. Every last human being ever created will stand before the divine judge. We will all see the judgment of heaven on all of humanity. The general judgment will serve to ratify the truth of Jesus Christ as sovereign. In other words, the Catholic Church will be seen for what she truly is and always has been, which is the supreme teaching authority on earth. It will be a time when the annals of human history will be set straight and many people will regret rejecting the church and her teachings. Many people will regret leaving the Catholic Church for false religions. Human history as we know it will come to an end. Last time Jesus Christ walked this earth, he was wrongly convicted and executed. And this supreme injustice will be the first to be corrected. Can you imagine Caiaphas can you imagine Pontius Pilate standing in awe before our Lord as he assumes the judgment seat? His judgment will be final. Jesus Christ willingly suffered the absolute worst injustice of all time. But on judgment day, there will be countless others that will be corrected as well. Archbishop Fulton Sheen used to say that God has created another world to correct the injustices in this one. This last day will also serve as a public ratification and announcement of the judgment each one of us will have received individually at our own private judgments at the moment of our death, the particular judgment. We are all judged by the King of Heaven at the moment that we die. And at that moment, absolutely nothing else will matter. The only thing that will matter is the state of our immortal soul. 
as it stands before God. Either steeped in sin or longing for company with saints in heaven. And the Catholic Church has always taught that the vast majority of humanity will not pass over this moment with ease. Advent reminds us that we're supposed to constantly focus on our final end. The four last things, we learn them when we're little children. Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. And the Greek the word for these realities is eschaton. We all die, and we're all judged. And after judgment, we'll either be escorted to salvation or damned to hell. Both are final, period. The following is an excerpt worth listening to from the book entitled The Four Last Things. Quote, now for the first time, her eyes are opened, and she sees clearly what eternity is, what sin is, and what virtue is. How infinite is the being of the deity, and how wondrous is her own nature. All this will appear so marvelous to her that she will be almost petrified with astonishment. And after the first instant of wonder, she will be conducted before the tribunal of God, that she may be given an account of all her actions, and the terror that will seize upon the unhappy soul surpasses our powers of conception." Next, consider in what manner the Holy Judge will receive thee when thou appearest before him, not merely laden with a countless multitude of sins, but in a state of indescribable impurity. Thou wilt stand before him in the greatest confusion, not knowing which way to look. Beneath thy feet hell lies, above thee is the angry countenance of thy judge. And beside thee thou seest the demons who are there to accuse thee. In thy own interior thou beholdest all thy sins and misdeeds. It is impossible to hide thyself, and yet this exposure is intolerable. Unquote. So this will be a time when a lifetime of millions of sins must be accounted for. Even for the just, those who are worthy of heaven, even for them, an account must be given. Because God hates sin. We must beg him to learn to hate it as well. Do we really mean it when we say in the act of contrition, I detest all my sins? The reality is that countless numbers of human beings who depart from this life do so not only not detesting their sins, but embracing them and actually loving them. For them, their private judgments will be the first moment of an eternity of horror. Do not believe it when false prophets proclaim that all men have a reasonable hope to be saved. If this were true, why is it that the Holy Mother of God herself, the Queen of Heaven and Earth, came to the peoples of the Americas to convert them to the one true Catholic faith? Advent is supposed to be a time of reflection on all of this. Christmas, which doesn't begin until December 24th, is a time for gratitude that the Son of God came to give us a way to be saved from damnation. God's love is unconditional, whereas salvation is not. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.